All right, everybody. So this is part two to the um, using the free medium that we learned how to download last time. Now we're going to be learning how to edit them using a free app called Filmmaker Pro. You could also use Splice to do this, but the app that I'm going to be using is Filmmaker Pro just because um, it has a few options that make it easier to download music where filmmaker pro um a splice sometimes won't allow you to use music now if you are using filmmaker pro you do not have to download the music that we are using you could just use some of their music that they offer um which is usually free to use and so that is an option the other thing you could do is you could get real cheatery especially if all of a sudden it's a premium option um and use the voice guy to use copyright free music um, if you need to kind of fudge around some of Splice's options. I've noticed Splice sometimes will switch what their premium options, what their premium features are. And recently it's been music that is premium. Um, and so you can't download music in there without paying for it, but you can still do voiceover. So you could just record some music. So that's just one of the workarounds that you can do, but I'm going to stop rambling and we're going to jump into Filmmaker Pro and I'm going to show you how to kind of bring all these pieces together as simply as possible. So let's start. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is go into the app, and it is this pink one right here. And I'm going to go up to the plus sign to add a new project. And pretty much universally, plus sign either means new project or new film. I'm going to say create new, and then I'm going to choose landscape, which is a horizontal aspect ratio. And then every time you open it up, there's always going to be instruction that pops up, like how to do things. Um, every time you open it up, doesn't matter how many times you've used the program, it always shows up. And so I'm going to go to plus at the bottom here and select video. And when you do that, a pop-up is going to show up and ask you for what you're going to actually be using. You can select file or photos, but I'm going to select photos because that's where I have my videos located. Now, remember that when you are downloading copyright free stuff, it's probably not going to be in um, like at the most recent. And one thing to kind of streamline your process is bring in your film in the order you actually want it to be observed. So now that I have them all in, I'm going to start with this cat eye. Now, most of the clips that you brought in are really long. They're like 15 to 20 seconds long, but the average person's attention span for B-roll is about three seconds tops, maybe even less. And so what you want to do is you want to make sure that all of your clips are cut down to about two or three seconds. Now, how you do that is you select the clip as you're seeing me do here, and then you drag those brackets in until you can see that number. Notice as I bring it up or bring it down, I can see the number go um, to three or four. You also want to choose something that's interesting. So what I'm not just going to the very beginning, I'm going to where I feel like the clip is the most dynamic because I want people to be interested in what they're watching. Then you press check at the side to confirm your clip. And so this cloud one's pretty boring. So I'm just taking the last three seconds. All right. So now I have all my clips lined up to one another. So as you see it play, notice how that eye is it's kind of long still. It's still a long clip. I might actually still shorten up my cat eye because it is still really long. One way I could do if I don't want to shorten it by cutting it is I can speed it up. So that second one next to the cut one, I can click on that and that will make my clip shorter because it will be in faster motion. Now, you obviously can't tell with that cat eye very much, but if you used, for instance, the train one, you might be able to see the time lapse a lot easier. One thing to watch out for is you can do slow motion as well, but if you do that, you're going to find that your slow motion might um, be too jittery because the frame rate isn't correct. So over here, though, next one past the time changing is your filters, and so you can kind of create an interesting look by adding a filter to your piece, and then you can kind of change it. This is going to be part of your final challenge is at least change one or two of these clips so that they have a different look to them. Now the next one we're going to try out is the reverse on the timeline here. So, the but first of all, in order to really see reverse is I'm going to need two of them. So what I went down and at, at the bottom there, I clicked the word duplicate. So if you see it at the bottom, you can see right there, it's the third word in, it's duplicate. So now I have two of these clips of this bird. And then when he turns his head one way, I put it in reverse. So then it will turn the other way. One thing I noticed as I was going is that it's too long of a wait for the bird's face here. It, we're just waiting forever for him to actually turn his head. So like you're boring your viewer. 
Just keep that in mind every time you're making any video. Is my take too long? Am I boring my viewer? So here I shortened it again. Now notice it goes one way and then boop, it goes back the other way because I put it in reverse. And so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to actually duplicate this one as well so you really can see it move. And I'm going to show you how to do it again. Put it in reverse. Now, if I press the time lapse, I can make it go a little bit faster. So my train is moving faster or not time lapse, but like the time duration right at the second one there, making it a little faster because this train is moving kind of slow. Now, if I press play, look at how the train goes in one direction and then goes in reverse. So that is another thing that you should definitely do in your own video is make your two of your clips go forward and reverse and change the speed. So I'm duplicating the clouds now too, and I'm going to put them at the beginning and the end, kind of creating like a cloud sandwich here so that I have that consistency. Also, clouds are kind of easy to look at. It's kind of like a rest for the eye. And how you can arrange your clips is you hold down the clip and then you can just drag it in the right order. So really easy to switch your clips in post. But sometimes if you have a lot of clips, it's easier to just make sure that they go in in the right order. So now we're gonna learn how to bring in music. So if you go to imported music, I've already got mine imported, but I'm gonna show you how to do it again. You go to that plus sign and then you go to get those out of the way go to your songs. So I'm going to select the Ben sound one. Make sure that you're not select if you're make sure that your cursor is actually selected onto the side of the the area of the film. So as I have my little timeline bar right there at the beginning. So that means that my timeline will start there. So now you can listen to the excellent music choice that I had here. What a bop. Anyway, so now that you have your music set, um, it will only go for as long as your clips are showing. As soon as your clips or your text are done, your music will automatically stop. However, if you wanted to shorten your music even more, the way that you can edit your music is by holding it down and adjusting it as well. But I'm going to bring in some more sounds. So I'm brought in the cat purring here. And so, um, and then I'm also going to go in, go to music. I'm going to import music. I add new and I bring in my waves. And then I can press that little download button there to bring in my waves. And since I had my cursor on that spot, my waves will be in just that spot. Now I wanted to make my waves, the waves went on for like 10 seconds. So I had to really shorten my crashing waves so that it fit within the area. Otherwise it would have just gone on forever. So you can see those little purple dashes. Each music line is set to how long it is. So notice I can't go any further because it's the end of the clips, but um, I can like still adjust my sound and my volume control if I want to. All right, so now I'm gonna move on back to visuals again, and I'm going to be adjusting it. So it's the fourth selection when you select on your clip. It looks like dials back and forth. You can actually go in and adjust the clips that you are working with. So I can make my bird a little bit more moody. And so it's different than the filters, which is the third one in, because you have a more manual control. And so you can make your films be more intentionally colored, where the filters will often be a little more extreme than you want them to be. So just kind of keep that in mind as you are editing. So here I've got my bird and you can see there is the edited one and there is the unedited one. All right, so now we're going to move on into text. So you go to the T at the bottom, and as soon as you click it, it's going to show double tap to enter, and you can tap in your text. Now, you need to have a title card on every single one of your videos. That should just be an automatic thing that you do, just because then it helps the viewer figure out what they're about to watch. So make sure that you give yourself a video for this first one. It could be something super simple, like tester video, and then press the check to put it in. Now here, if you try and select these words, they're paid, they're the paid option. So the only choices you really have are these fonts right here, but there's a lot of different fonts you can use and a lot of different colors. Be aware of the colors of your colors of your letters too, so that they don't blend into the background. All right. So 
The next thing I'm going to do is put my end credits in and we use sound from Ben Sound. And so we have to make sure that we credit them because that's part of the rules. If you are using their work, you need to give them credit for all their hard work that they did. So here in the credits, you would say music by Ben Sound and you should do the title of the music because I didn't want to waste too much of your time with me typing so slowly. I'm just putting music by Ben Sound. All right, so the next thing I'm going to show you here is transition. So if you click on those little black squares between, you can actually do different transitions, which will be like sweeps. So if I push play, you can then have different transitions, and that just adds in more elements. You want to find all the different ways that you can elevate your video to be more entertaining and more watchable because people consume a lot of media, and as soon as they get bored, they'll just they have better choices. They can move on. So make sure that you find as many different ways to hold your viewer as long as possible. So I'm watching through my video here from beginning to end. I can go through, add a few more transitions, and then we will be exporting it. All right, it's come time to export. So you go to the bottom where that square and the arrow is right there and you click it. As soon as you do, you're going to have options. You want it to be set to 1080. 720 is like the lowest bar for considered HD. So 1080 is what you want to set it to and then press check and then it will do the little doodly do. And then you're going to save to your photos. And then as soon as your export is done, you can then go and make sure you check your photos first before you do anything because otherwise you might not have it. Now notice at the bottom there you have that big Filmmaker Pro badging, which I kind of had talked about before um, in another one of my videos. That um, is one of the downsides to Filmmaker Pro, but it has so many options. That is kind of one of the reasons why we use it. It's a really good editor for free. So I hope you found this helpful and I hope you have a really great day, everybody. Bye.